let's start so today in this lecture we are going to complete our discussion of uh, operator overloading and by complete i mean like it would be complete for uh, as much as we want for this course so it is not entirely complete like there are a lot of things that that you we might need to learn about operator overloading but it is uh, enough for us uh, for the purposes of this course so after we complete this discussion so you will have a clear idea of what operator overloading is and how can you operate binary operate uh, sorry overload binary operators how can you overload unary operators and unary operators both in their prefix and postfix form so yesterday in our lecture we we looked at how we can uh, overload binary operators we overloaded the addition and subtraction operators for the my complex class that we created we also learned about how to overload a unary operator and that the unary operator that we overloaded was the negation operator for the complex class so negation is uh, uh, a unary operator but it it occurs only in one one form and that is the prefix form so negation is always done by putting the negation operator before the operand okay so there 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 are unary operators that that uh, that have their prefix and postfix forms for example you are aware of the uh, increment operator so increment can be used in its pre increment form and the post increment form so it's the same operator it does the same thing but there is uh, a slight uh, difference between those uh, the, the way that operation is carry, carried out in the prefix form and in the postfix form okay so similarly we have the pre decrement and post decrement uh, operators as well there is a difference uh, when you are trying to overload uh, the pre increment operator and the pre post increment operators so if you are trying to overload the pre increment and the post increment operators the way you do it the syntax for that is a little different that's why we are discussing it okay so today's discussion will sort of conclude uh, our our discussion of operator overloading uh, to the extent that we want to have it so what we want to the extent to which we want to have this discussion is basically uh, in this lab th that you will be having uh, tomorrow so i guess i have covered almost all the material for this lab and we'll complete it today so our, our discussion for today will will complete it Uh, moreover in towards the end of this lecture i'll mention certain things uh, about operator overloading uh, things to which some of which i might have already mentioned but we we mention certain things certain things that you need to be you need to know about operator overloading <clears throat> before you can use it or before you want to use it so we'll talk about those things in the end so right now in this lecture we will be overloading uh, the pre increment operator the post increment operator the pre decrement operator and the post decrement operator and we'll be doing it just to uh, stress the way the difference between overloading the pre and post increment operators so there is a slight dif difference in the syntax of doing that now in order to use the increment operator like uh, uh, we are going to create a new class the counter class so the counter class is going to be a simple software based counter just like the hardware counters that you created in digital logic so i guess you i hope like you have uh, you know how to create a digital counter the up counter and the down counter uh, so here we are going to basically emulate that counter so it is going to be a software counter a uh, very simple class just one data member and that data member is the count property or just one property the count property and you will provide an interface through which this count property can be uh, manipulated so we will provide the default constructor which will create a counter with an initial value of 0 as count we will create the we will declare the uh, overloaded constructor which can initialize uh, the counter to a preset value and we'll have these functions count up count down so the count up function will increase the 
value of the count property and return the new value of the count property. The countdown function will decrease or decrement the value of the count property and it will return the modified value or updated value. Similarly, the get count uh, function, it will allow you to read uh, the count property at any, any point. So we are basically writing this class in order to test the increment, func uh, increment operator, the pre-increment operator, the post-increment operator. We can also test that operator uh, using the my complex class, but my inc in incrementing a, my a complex number does not make that much of sense. A complex number has two parts, the real part and imaginary part. So if you are incrementing it, so which part should you increment both part or just the real part or just the imaginary part? So the count, the increment operation does not make a lot of sense for uh, uh, complex numbers. That's why we are creating a separate class counter in order to, uh, in order to uh, test this, uh, uh, oh, the, the overloading of the pre-increment and post-increment operators and the pre-decrement and post-decrement operators. Okay, so yeah, I just wrote this code in in in, in the last sec session with section A. So <clears throat> in this in this code, basically what we are doing is we are just we we just created the the counter class, and in the main program. Uh, I have instantiated an object of the counter class. Okay, so and I have instantiated it, it by invoking the default constructor. So this counter object C1, its count property will have the value zero. Its count property will have the value zero. So when we uh, when this statement is executed, which basically prints the value of the count property, uh, we will get zero on the output so you will have counter c1 is equal to zero then we want to post increment it okay we want to post increment it so this is how you can post increment it now c1 is an object of type counter it is not an integer so i guess in our last lecture yesterday i showed you how how the what is the difference between the pre increment and the post increment operator and we use an integer variable to do that so here we have overloaded, like I, I already have written that code, that's why we can do it. So we have overloaded the increment operator, the post increment operator, uh, so that it can work on, on uh, objects of type counter. And when you increment uh, a counter object, when you post increment a counter object, so the way we have implemented that operator function it returns us the updated value of the count property. So the return type is an integer. The return type is not a counter object. You can return a counter object as well. Like that is also okay, possible. Uh, in fact, I guess in one of the tasks that I gave you for the lab, this is what I want you to do. You can do that as well. I just want to show you like th this, is, this is what we want to do. So now we have uh, here the post increment operator and here we have the pre-increment operator. The behavior of both these operators is different. The behavior of both these operators is different. Although they increment the count property, and by increment we means the count properties is, is increased by one. But the timing is important. When is it increased by one? In post-increment, first the value of the counter is printed, okay? And then the count property is incremented. In pre-incremented, first the value of the count property is increased and then the updated value is printed. Okay, So that is what uh, happens here. That is how the post-increment and the pre-increment operators differ from each other. Okay, So in post-increment, uh, the, 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 the way you can remember the behavior of post-increment operator is first use the variable then post in, then increment it and the way you can understand the behavior of the pre increment operator is first increment the variable and then use it okay so for example here we want to use the c1 object and by using we, we mean that we want to print it so this is inside the c out statement and we want we have hand 
given it to this stream insertion operator. So we want to basically print the counter object C1. But we are also post incrementing it. So what it, uh, the way we can uh, understand the behavior of this statement is, we'll say first print the counter object and then increment it, and then increment it. And the way we are going to uh, interpret the behavior of the pre-increment operator here is, first increment the counter object, then print it. So here the printing takes place first, the incrementing later, post increment. Here the printing, uh, incrementing takes place prior to printing, pre-increment, okay? So this is the behavior. How do we achieve it? So in order to achieve it, we have to write the operator function for both these operators, okay? Now there is a slight dilemma here. The pre-increment and the post-increment operator, both they are uh, unary operators. So we learned that if you are overloading a binary operator, uh, the operator function receives at least one argument, one input argument. If you are overloading a unary operator, then the argument, uh, there is no argument to the operator function that implements the unit that overloads the unary operator. Okay, so we looked, we learned that yesterday. The negation operator, the operator function for the negation operator, it did not have any argument. Whereas the operator function for uh, the subtraction operator, it had one argument, okay? So if you are overloading a unary operator, the operator function that you will write to overload the unary operator, that operator function does not have any uh, input argument, okay? Now, there may it may be confusing. We are going to overload the same operator Okay, increment, but one is pre-increment, one is post-increment. So the operator functions may look the same, okay? The operator functions uh, may look the same because both are unary operators, there, is no, there isn't going to be any argument to these functions and both operators have the same symbol. So you might expect that the operator functions would look the same, just like here, say for example, uh, the operator function might look the same like this, int operator plus plus and then no input argument, okay? So yes, if, if, uh, uh, if you think about it, the operator functions should look the same. But the, the, the people who designed the C++ language, so they like, uh, they have given, they have given you kind of a trick, like it does not make any sense, it is sort of a trick. Uh, which helps the compiler identify which function is going to be called when it is pre-incrementing a variable and which operator function is going to be called when it is post-incrementing uh, a counter object. So that trick is that uh, both these functions, uh, the operator functions for overloading the, uh, count, the increment operator, in the pre-increment form and in the post-increment form. So their signature is, is essentially the same. Okay, They have essentially the same signature. The only difference is, and this is like, this is, this is the kind of difference that does not make any logical sense, except for the fact that the compiler wants to differentiate between the two functions in some way. And the way that the, the people who designed the C++ language chose was that the post increment operator function will receive a dummy integer argument okay so it is uh, sufficient if you if you just write int here you do not need to declare a variable of type int even if you just write int here that is also fine okay so the way the post pre increment operator function and the post increment operator function the way they are differentiated is only this dummy integer argument otherwise they should look the same because they are both unary operators. So, how do they differentiate in both? Okay? Both are unary operators. Hai, dono ka symbol, uh, ye plus plus symbol, dono ka ek jaisa hai. So, how do they differentiate in both? So, for differentiating, it's just a dummy uh, integer variable. Dal de in fact, you just need to supply this int keyword. Now, it will differentiate in both. Now, this is the operator function that is going to be called when you are pre-incrementing the counter object. And this is the operator function when, that is going to be called when you are post incrementing the operator, uh, the counter object. Okay. Achha. Is int ka 
इस इंट से कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है लाइक ऐसा नहीं है कि चूंकि इस ऑपरेटर का रिटर्न टाइप जो है वो इंट है दैट्स वाई यहाँ पे इंट होना चाहिए नहीं इट्स रिटर्न टाइप कैन बी अकाउंटर ऑब्जेक्ट बट दिस मस्ट बी एन इंट दिस मस्ट बी द इंट की ठीक है सिर्फ इसी तरीके से हम डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सकते हैं कि ये प्री इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर फंक्शन है ये पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर फंक्शन है ठीक है अब ये प्री इंक्रीमेंट और पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट को सेपरेटली पढ़ने का मकसद भी यही है कि हमें पता है कि यूनरी ऑपरेटर को कैसे ओवरलोड करना है दिस इज हाउ यू ओवरलोड अनरी ऑपरेटर ओके इंक्रीमेंट इज अनरी ऑपरेटर दिस इज हाउ यू ओवरलोड इट बट दिस इज दरेटर फंक्शन फॉर द प्री इंक्रीमेंट फॉर्म ऑफ द Uh, increment operator for the prefix form of the increment operator if you want to increment it uh, overload its postfix form as well so this is the syntax that you need to follow theek hai operator wahi unary operator hai lekin syntax mein fark isliye hai ke unary operator ka aap prefix aur postfix form mein humne fark karna hai to uske liye bas simple ye ek keyword aapne add karna hai theek hai That is the only difference that they need to be, and this is just the requirement of syntax. Yes, syntax ki requirement. Iski koi logical requirement nahi hai. Logical tuk nahi banti ki yahan integer ham kyu pass kar rahe hain. ठीक है? इसको हमने use नहीं करना. This is just a dummy keyword. Implementation में भी ये ऐसे ही रहेगा. ठीक है? So जब आपने operator function pre increment the increment is a unary operator. जब आपने उसको overload करना हो for the prefix form. This is how you have to overload it. So the operator function यहाँ पे हम return uh, integer कर रहे हैं. You can return a counter as well, ठीक है? You can return a counter object as well. You can do that, ठीक है? And you will do that in the as part of your lab. यहाँ पे मैं नहीं कर रहा फिलहाल, ठीक है? But I I am leaving that as an exercise for you. So उसमें again कोई मसला नहीं होना चाहिए. क्यों मसला नहीं होना चाहिए? Because we have already done that. हमारा जो my complex क्लास uh, थी उसके जितने भी ऑपरेटर फंक्शंस हमने ओवरलोड किए थे तो उनकी रिटर्न टाइप वाज अ माय कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑब्जेक्ट ठीक है तो यहाँ पे भी वो करना मुश्किल नहीं है आसान है सिंपली आपने वो ऑब्जेक्ट क्रिएट करना है और उसको अप्रोप्रिएटली इनिशियलाइज करना है ठीक है तो वो आप कर सकते हैं वो दैट दैट कैन बी इजिली डन यहाँ सिंपल जो इस लेक्चर का मकसद है वो यही है कि आप प्री इंक्रीमेंट और पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर जो दोनों यूनरी ऑपरेटर हैं उनको अगर ओवरलोड करेंगे तो कैसे करेंगे सिर्फ उस सिंटेक्स को रिफ्रेश करना है ठीक है उस सिंटेक्स को बयान करना है तो दिस इज द स्लाइट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सिंटेक्स ऑफ द टू ठीक है इसको याद रखना है आपने जब भी आपने एक यूनरी ऑपरेटर जो कि प्रीफिक्स फॉर्म में हो उसको ओवरलोड करना है तो उसको यूं ओवरलोड करेंगे अगर पोस्ट फिक्स फॉर्म में हो तो उसको ओवरलोड करना है तो यूं ओवरलोड करेंगे द सेम गोज फॉर द प्री डेक्रीमेंट एंड पोस्ट डेक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर ठीक है नाउ दिस इज अवर काउंटर क्लास बड़ी सिंपल सी क्लास है ये उसका डिफॉल्ट कंस्ट्रक्टर ओवरलोडेड कंस्ट्रक्टर व्हिच विल इनिशियलाइज इट विद द प्रीसेट वैल्यू दिस इज द गेट काउंट फंक्शन अच्छा इसकी काउंट प्रॉपर्टी को मैंने सी ओ यू एन डबल टी का नाम दिया है जस्ट टू अवॉइड एनी कंफ्यूजन विद एनी अदर कांस्टेंट फ्रॉम एनी अदर लाइब्रेरी और समथिंग लाइक दैट सिर्फ उससे कंफ्यूजन को रोकने के लिए अच्छा रीसेट फंक्शन क्या करेगा काउंट को रीसेट कर देगा जीरो कर देगा ठीक है काउंट अप फंक्शन लिखा है टू इंक्रीमेंट द काउंट ताकि अपवर्ड काउंटिंग हो सके वन टू थ्री फोर तो ये एक उस तक जाएगा ठीक है प्लस वन करेगा काउंट अप इज इंक्रीमेंटेड सो दिस इज दिस इज हाउ वी इंश्योर दैट दोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर फंक्शन एंड द प्री इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर फंक्शन दे बेसिकली गिव द और एग्जिबिट द बिहेवियर ऑफ अ प्री इंक्रीमेंट एंड पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इंपॉर्टेंट लाइक you the way we are uh, returning the value of the count variable this statement is important okay so this ensures that first the value of the count variable is incremented and then the new value incremented value is returned this ensures that the value of the uh, count property is first uh, returned and then it is incremented okay so these statements are important for getting the behavior that that that, that we want similarly for the pre decrement operator functions and the post decrement operator functions the the code is more or less the same just the operator is uh, different okay so this is the pre increment operator function the list of arguments is empty for the post increment operator function we just specify the keyword int here okay so this is a requirements of the syntax the language it it is it has nothing logical 
to do here. Like there's nothing logical about it. And again, I'm, re I'm repeating that this int has nothing to do with this int. Okay, this must always be int. This can be anything. Like this can be any return value depending upon the, the function that you are uh, trying to overload. So we can return a counter object here. Okay, we can return a counter object or we can return an integer value that depends upon, upon you. So this is how we have implemented the operator functions for the pre-increment and the post increment and pre-decrement and post-decrement. Now, how do we use these operators in the main function to verify or validate their behavior? So this is how we use it. We create this uh, count object. So let us invoke the overloaded constructor here. Let us give it a preset value. So let's suppose the count variable uh, counter has a preset count value of 100, say for example. So the first thing that we do is we want to get the count value so we'll get 100 here then we are post incrementing the counter okay so how are we doing it so we have overloaded the post increment operator and we just say c1 plus plus so c1 is a counter object it's not an integer but it is a counter object and we have overloaded the post increment function for it so that's why we can call the c1 plus plus we can write this expression it will invoke the post increment operator function and that operator function is this one. So this operator function would be called. And it will first print out this statement, post incrementing the counter. Okay? Then it will execute this statement. And by the execution of this statement, what will happen is we will get the current value of the count, which is 100, and it will be printed on the screen. And then that value will be incremented. It will become 101. Okay, but the one that will be printed on screen, that will be 100. Okay, so this will print 100 then again we say count to c1 is equal to c1 dot get count this will print 101 the updated value of the count variable okay uh, i'll get to your question bilal similarly this statement uh, plus plus pre-increment c1 this will result in the execution of this operator function okay this operator function so first you'll see this message printed on the screen then this statement will be executed and when this statement is executed first the value of the count property will be incremented so it will become 102 and then that value will be returned then that value will be uh, returned okay so that is how the pre-increment uh, function will work so this statement will print 102 this will print 102 the updated value of the count variable after incrementing it okay and here again we'll get 102 because uh, uh, the value has already been uh, pre-incremented and updated printed here similarly uh, when you uh, post decrement count the counter object c1 so the post decrement operator function will would be executed which is this function this function here so when this function is executed first, this statement will be executed and you will see post decrementing the counter on the output. Then uh, this statement will be executed. And what does this statement do? It says return count minus minus post decrement count. So first the current value of the count variable, which is 102, that will be returned and then it will be decremented. So it will become 101. But the value that you will see on the screen would be 102. Then when you say counter c1 is equal to c1 dot get count, so you will basically be uh, getting the updated value of the count variable, which is it, which is 101. Then this statement is executed. Here we are pre-decrementing c1. When you are pre-decremented c1, so the pre-decrement counter function will be executed, which is this function. Okay. So first this line will be printed and then the count variable will be decremented and the decremented value will be returned. So it is 101. When we entered this function, it was 101. It will be pre-decremented. It will become uh, 100 and then that, pre that, that, that value will be uh, returned to us. So this statement will print 100 and similarly this will also print 100. Okay. So if we uh, build and run this file, so this is what we are going to see on the output. Okay. So first of all, we 
created a counter object with a preset value of 100. And then we are printing uh, this thing, counter C1 is equal to C1.getCount. So we get C1 is equal to 100. Then we are post incrementing the counter, okay? How? Post incrementing counter C1 and we say C1 plus one, C1 plus plus. So the post increment function operator function is called. There we are basically first printing this statement, post incrementing the counter. Then this statement is executed, post incrementing counter C1. So you see the old value of the counter, not the incremented value. And that is what post increment means. You use the value and then you increment it. So we use the value of the counter for printing here and then we incremented it. So after the execution of this statement, the counter does become 101. But what you see here is the old one. That incrementation uh, takes place after the value is printed, the value of the counter is printed. And you, we verify that the value of the counter has indeed been uh, incremented by invoking the c1.getCount function and printing the value of the counter, so which is 101. When you pre-increment counter, okay, so you print the updated value. You first increment the counter, it becomes 102, and then you print it. So you get the one updated value of the counter on the screen, okay? Similarly, post decrementing counter C1. So we print counter C C1, and then when we are post decrementing it, so it is decremented after printing. Okay, so we are post decrementing it, but we are printing it as well. So the counter uh, object C1, first it is printed, its old value of 102 is printed, then it is decremented. And you can get the decremented value in the next statement when we say C1.getCount, okay, in this statement at line number 15. Then you pre decrement it. When you pre decrement it, this operator function is executed. Pre decrement. So first this statement is printed and then the va value of the count variable is decremented and the decremented value is returned to you, okay? So when you print this thing, what you'll get on the screen is 100, okay? So pre-decrementing counter C1 is equal to 100 and after that the value does not change, it stays 100 when you're just reading it. So that is how you can overload uh, the pre-increment and post-increment, the pre-decrement and post-decrement operators. They are all unary operators, but they can occur in the prefix and postfix forms. And that is why this discussion was important so that you know uh, how to overload a function uh, that occurs in the prefix form, a unary operator, sorry, how to overload a unary operator in its prefix form and how to overload a unary operator in its postfix form, okay? That sort of completes uh, our discussion of the uh, operator overloading uh, for this for the, for the for the purposes of this course. So I hope you have some idea of how operating operator overloading uh, takes place. There are some other things that that also need to be said about it. Uh, one, uh, you you should remember that, and you can look it up in in the textbook that that we have for this course. So first of all, you should go and look up the operators that you can overload. So there are certain operators that you cannot overload. For example, you cannot overload the dot member access operator, okay? I guess you can overload the arrow member access operator, but you cannot overload the dot member access operator, okay? And there are certain other member function uh, operators that cannot be overloaded. So one, you cannot overload every operator that you have. Okay, there are certain operators that cannot be overloaded. Which operators can be overloaded? You can find that list in the textbook. So you should read it out. This is a reading assignment. Two, okay, I'll uh, come back to you, Sania. Two, uh, you cannot create a new operator. You cannot define a new operator by overloading. Okay, so you can only overload existing operators. So existing operators that C++ language has so you can overload only uh, an operator from among that list, not from outside. You cannot create a new operator by overloading, okay? Uh, third, you cannot change the rules of precedence and associativity with overloading. The rules of precedence will remain the same, even if the behavior changes, okay? For example, addition plus will always have a lower precedence than multiplication asterisk, okay? 
अब अगर आप ऐसा करें कि जी आप कहें कि मैं एस्टेरिक ऑपरेटर को ओवरलोड करता हूं फॉर माय कॉम्प्लेक्स क्लास आप उसको ओवरलोड करें और आप एस्टेरिक को इस तरह से ओवरलोड करें कि आप दो कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स को ऐड करें व्हेन यू कॉल दैट फंक्शन ठीक है और आप एडिशन ऑपरेटर जो प्लस है उसको आप ओवरलोड करें फॉर द माय कॉम्प्लेक्स क्लास और उसको आप ऐसे ओवरलोड करें कि आप मल्टीप्लिकेशन uh, कर रहे हो यानी इन साइड द ऑपरेटर फंक्शन फॉर द प्लस ऑपरेटर यू कैन डू मल्टीप्लिकेशन ठीक है बट ऑपरेटर प्लस रहेगा तो उसका प्रेसिडेंस वुड ऑलवेज बी लोअर देन एस्टेरिक मल्टीप्लिकेशन दैट कैन नॉट बी चेंज आप रूल्स ऑफ प्रेसिडेंस और एसोसिएटिविटी को नहीं छेड़ सकते वो हमेशा वैसे ही रहेंगे लास्ट वन यू कैन नॉट चेंज दाइनरी नेचर ऑफ एन ऑपरेटर और यूनरी नेचर ऑफ एन ऑपरेटर An operator that is binary will always remain binary. An operator that is unary will always remain unary. So C plus plus में आपके पास already जो binary operators हैं तो वो binary रहेंगे, जो unary operators हैं तो वो unary रहेंगे. ऐसा नहीं हो सकता कि आप किसी operator को ऐसे overload करें कि वो binary से unary बन जाए या unary से binary बन जाए. ये भी आप change नहीं कर सकते. ठीक है? So there are certain restrictions to operator overloading. It gives you Uh, certain uh, facilities, but it give it restricts you in some manners as well. Like there are certain restrictions. As a niye ke aap kuch bhi kar sakte hain isme. The last thing that I want to say is that jab aap apne uh, this is this is this has nothing to do with operator road overloading. This has uh, something to do with a mistake that some people might make. Especially uh, aapki class fellow Sania, aapne jo mujhe code send kiya tha. तो so, उसमें ये गलती आपने की है वो गलती क्या है कि वेन एवर यू आर एडिंग अ न्यू फाइल टू योर प्रोजेक्ट अ न्यू हेडर फाइल और अ न्यू सोर्स फाइल तो आपसे शुरू में एक सवाल किया जाता है फॉर एग्जांपल लेट मी ऐड ये एक डमी सी फाइल है जो मैं ऐड करना चाहता हूँ फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस एड अस एड सम फाइल टू दिस प्रोजेक्ट सो लेट अस एड अनदर सोर्स फाइल ठीक है अब इस सोर्स फाइल को हम ऐड कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे जब मैं ये नेक्स्ट क्लिक करता हूँ लैंग्वेज सेलेक्ट की यहाँ पे आई मास्ट आई एम बीइंग आस्क अ क्वेश्चन ठीक है ऐड फाइल टू एक्टिव प्रोजेक्ट इन बिल्ड टारगेट्स डीबग एंड रिलीज आपने जब भी नई हेडर फाइल ऐड करनी हो या नई सोर्स फाइल ऐड करनी हो आपने उस फाइल को इन uh, इन दोनों टारगेट में एड करना सो यू हैव टू सेलेक्ट ऑल अगर आप ये नहीं करते तो आप अपना बिल्कुल आपका सही लिखा हुआ कोड होगा बिल्कुल उसमें कोई एरर नहीं होगा लेकिन वो काम नहीं करेगा ठीक है एंड वन ऑफ द मिस्टेक्स दैट यू मेड सानिया इन योर कोड वाज दिस कि आपका कोड फॉर एग्जांपल जब मैंने भी ठीक कर लिया तो इट डिडंट वर्क इनिशियली सो व्हाई डिडंट इट वर्क इनिशियली बिकॉज द हेडर फाइल एंड द सोर्स फाइल दैट यू एड इन टू योर प्रोजेक्ट तो आपने उनके लिए ये ऑप्शन नहीं सिलेक्ट की थी कि उनको इन टारगेट्स में आपने इंक्लूड करना है सो दिस वाज नॉट सिलेक्टेड फॉर दोस हेडर फाइल एंड सोर्स फाइल अवर क्लासेस डॉट एच और अवर क्लासेस डॉट सी प्लस प्लस जब ये सिलेक्ट ना हो तो फिर आपका सही लिखा हुआ कोड भी काम नहीं करेगा ठीक है ये मैं आपको भी डेमोन्स्ट्रेट कर दूंगा कि वो कैसे काम नहीं करेगा तो इसको तो मैं कैंसिल कर रहा हूँ अच्छा ये काम ये कोड सही काम करता है ठीक है यू नो दैट इसको बिल्ड एंड रन करें बिल्कुल काम ठीक करता है अब मैं ये जो वर्क स्पेस है इसको जरा क्लीन करता हूँ ताकि तमाम जो बिल्ड फाइल्स हैं और वो तमाम फाइल्स डिलीट हो जाएं। आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द क्लीन स्लेट दूसरा काम जो मैं करता हूं वो ये करता हूं कि आई गो टू द प्रोजेक्ट प्रॉपर्टीज ठीक है एंड हेयर आई मेक चेंजेस टू बिल्ड टारगेट्स। बिल्ड टारगेट्स पे मैं आता हूं और यहां पे मैं ये मेरे पास डीबर्ग और रिलीज वर्जन है ना अब अगर आप देखें डीबर्ग में बिल्ड टारगेट फाइल्स में अवर क्लासेस डॉट सी प्लस प्लस और अवर क्लासेस डॉट एच ये दोनों इंक्लूडेड हैं मैं इनको एक्सक्लूड कर देता हूँ सिमिलरली रिलीज में भी एक्सक्लूड कर देता हूँ ठीक है एंड देन आई से ओके इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब ये है कि जब मेरा प्रोजेक्ट बनेगा इन एन एग्जीक्यूटिबल फाइल ये फाइल्स उसमें इंक्लूड नहीं होंगी ठीक है तो अगर आप शुरू में वो ऑप्शन चेक नहीं करते तो आप बेसिकली ये मिस्टेक कर रहे होते हैं तो आपका कोड सही भी हो आपका ये जो फाइल्स है ना अवर क्लासेस डॉट एच और अवर क्लासेस डॉट सी प्लस प्लस ये उसमें इंक्लूड ही नहीं होती तो उसका फायदा ही नहीं है आपके सही कोड का भी फायदा नहीं होता 
तो फिर आपको ये एरर मिलता है अनडिफाइंड रेफरेंस टू काउंटर काउंटर और ये सारी चीजें ठीक है तो so, इस इस एरर का बेसिक वज, इसकी वजह क्या है आपका कोड सब कुछ ठीक है बिल्कुल आपने ठीक लिखा हुआ है बट आपने ये जो नई हेडर फाइल्स हैं और ये जो नई सोर्स फाइल है जो आपने मेन के बाद ऐड की है इसको आपने इंक्लूड नहीं किया इन टू द टारगेट फॉर द रिलीज एंड डीबग वर्जन ठीक है तो इसको आप जो है वो इंक्लूड कर सकते हैं कैसे गो अगेन टू प्रोजेक्ट प्रॉपर्टीज एंड यहाँ पे बिल्ड टारगेट्स में तो डिबग वर्जन में भी इसको इंक्लूड कर दें और रिलीज वर्जन में भी इनको इंक्लूड कर दें ठीक है एंड देन यू कैन बिल्ड एंड रन इट एंड इट विल रन फाइन सो अदर देन बाकी मिस्टेक्स भी लोग करते हैं लेकिन इस किस्म की मिस्टेक भी हो जाती हैं और फिर अपेरेंटली आपका कोड ठीक होता है आप उसको लैब हैंड आउट से कॉपी पेस्ट करके चलाते हैं लेकिन फिर भी नहीं चलता तो उसकी एक पॉसिबल वजह ये भी हो सकती है ठीक है अच्छा जी नाउ क्वेश्चंस सर मैंने ये पूछना था कि अभी आपने कहा है ना कि जिस तरह पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट या पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट में हम लोग वो ब्रैकेट में इंट एज एन आर्गूमेंट पास करते हैं दिस इज लाइक नहीं करते जी तो सर अभी तो ऊपर हमारे पास जो क्लास का मेंबर फंक्शन है वो भी इंट ही है ना तो अगर उसकी हम डेटा टाइप चेंज करेंगे तो यहाँ पे भी तो फिर चेंज करनी पड़ेगी या नहीं यहाँ पर यही रहेगा नहीं नहीं यहाँ पे नहीं ये मैंने दो मत, दो तीन मतलब काफी मतलब स्ट्रेस किया है कि इन दोनों का आपस में कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है ये इंट ही रहेगा ये चेंज हो सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस कैन बी काउंटर यू कैन रिटर्न अकाउंटर ऑब्जेक्ट अगर मेरे पास जो काउंटर ऑब्जेक्ट्स की जो मैंने डेटा मेंबर्स बनाए हैं तो वो अगर मैं बनाती हूँ फ्लोर ठीक है तो इसमें फिर मैं डेटा टाइप में फ्लोर चेंज करूंगी अच्छा यहाँ टाइप में यहाँ पे यहाँ पे फ्लोट है फॉर एग्जांपल ठीक है तो फिर ये रिटर्न टाइप फ्लोट होगी दिस वुड बी फ्लोट दिस वुड बी फ्लोट ठीक है This would तमाम return types, वो हाँ वो हमेशा हमेशा रहेगा रहेगा this would always be int ठीक है बस हाँ अगेन ये int इसलिए रहेगा कि ये मैंने आपसे कहा ना कि ये इसकी कोई logical तुक नहीं बनती यहाँ पे होने की अगर इसकी कोई logical reason होती तो फिर इसका कोई connection भी होता है इन return types के साथ या किसी और चीज के साथ ये simple बस compiler को ये इशारा देना है कि ये जो ऑपरेटर uh, फंक्शन है ये पोस्ट इंक्रीमेंट ऑपरेटर uh, फंक्शन के लिए है और ये जो ऑपरेटर फंक्शन है ये पोस्ट डेक्रीमेंट के लिए ठीक है सिर्फ ये इंडिकेशन देनी है अदरवाइज okay. इसकी और कोई लॉजिकल को देर इज नो रीजन फॉर इट टू एग्जिस्ट ठीक है ओके थैंक यू एनी अदर क्वेश्चन 